Welcome to the Sikkim 365 Baseball Podcast with Levi Carraway. Presented by TNG Chemical and Supply. Let us be your one-stop shop for all of your business supplies at 3328 Franklin Avenue in Waco. Serving Central Texas since 1967. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of the Sikkim 365 Baseball Podcast. I think for the, actually, yes, for the first time this year, Baylor went 4-0 this week, so we have some good things to talk about, a lot of positives, and uh, Baylor's starting to play like it's it's best ball this season, and honestly, it's best ball of the Mitch Thompson era. So first, I'll kind of get into some game recaps, and I'll go to, into some positives from the week, and then we'll preview the huge series against Kansas this weekend. But first, I'd like to thank Mark George and our sponsors at TNG Chemical for making this happen. Appreciate all that they do for us. And so, yeah, um, this weekend was a really, really fun series. I, I thankfully got the opportunity to go to Provo for my for the first time. So that was super fun. I have a buddy that goes up there and I just I stayed with him and I had a we had a ton of fun getting to enjoy the mountains and whatnot, but also some great baseball. And so starting on Thursday night, um, Mason Marriott had another really good outing. He's just been fantastic this year. And there were quite he, he wasn't as sharp as he normally is with his command. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing about the difference from last year to this year with him is, and even Coach Thompson has said this, is just his maturity and his ability to know, like, I am better than you. I'm going to get you out. And I think last year when you have a guy on first, a guy on second with one out, you know, those are three spots. Those are four spots. And this year, either he's walking out, out of that inning unscathed or he's mitigating the damage to, like, only one run. And I think that's, like, his biggest difference this year. And he's been fantastic. I mean, he's only a junior. Hopefully he's going to be able to come back next year. I know there's going to be – there's anticipated there's going to be some a little bit of uh, draft interest, but we'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, five innings pitched, two earned runs, four four walks, four strikeouts, but still a really good outing. Got the win, and then on on offense at that point, this was they picked up a season high fourteen hits in Big Twelve play. Enzo Apodaca three for six, Daniel Altman two for six with a huge double, three RBIs. Cole Posey three for five. We'll get into him in a little bit. Court Castle two for five. Really good win, nine to two. Uh, Nothing nothing too anxious about that one. Ethan Calder came out of the pen, three scoreless. Drew Leach finished it off with a clean ninth. And then on Friday, um, this game was honestly, you know, this was up there probably with the Texas, with the Friday night Texas game for the best win of the year because for the majority of this game, Baylor trailed 4-2. to two. Um, Top of the ninth, Bears scrapped across two runs kind of in a little bit of a crazy way. And, and you know, I think, one of the the encouraging things about this is they're just finding ways to win games that they wouldn't have in the past, and I think that was that's been really fun to watch um, in this game in particular. And when it went into the tenth, uh, Cade Fletcher pinch hits gets a huge, or he might have been a defensive sub. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he gets a huge double in the tenth. Tyreek Kemp comes through with a huge, huge go ahead double down the right field line, and he's played great. I'll kind of get into that in a minute, and then. Bears go up eight to four. Enzo and Ty both also Ty Johnson both also got RBI singles in that inning. And then in the bottom of the ninth, Drew Leach didn't have his best stuff, kind of struggled. Um, got two outs. Ethan Calder came in, got the final out on four pitches, and he's just been incredible this year. He's probably going to be he's going to be an All Conference team out at at this pace. And so another guy who played really well, pitched really well that night, Kobe Andrade. He's been arguably Baylor's second best reliever. And then Gabe Craig gave a really good inning out of the pin his his slider was working and he looked he looked nasty i mean when that slider's working he can he's one of the hard, harder throwing guys on the team so you know when his stuff is clicking he's he's pretty unhittable and uh he missed about a month and a half with an oblique injury so it's, it's good to get him back for for uh, coach thompson's squad and he'll be important um down the stretch and then uh and then on saturday this is one of the craziest games i've ever seen um in my three years covering college baseball so baylor led 18 to four or eighteen to five in the going to the bottom of the six. And then that game ended up eighteen to seven. BYU scored twelve straight unanswered runs. Um I think it was one of those games where Coach Thompson was trying to, you know, well originally I was like, let's go, like run rule, I'm gonna get out of here early. Like this is gonna be great. Um the ten after seven run rule and that just didn't happen. Like Steven Sepulvitas had a couple couple rough outings in a row and then Andrew Petrowski came in and just got shelled. I mean he BYU is just taking batting practice off of him unfortunately and so I think it was one of those situations where coach Thompson didn't want to have to use like his you know his kind of go-to arms in that situation because you're up by so many runs and he just at some point you expect you know somebody to pop up a pitch somebody to ground out to first and it just didn't happen they were just destroying Petrowski and then he brought in Kobe Andrade in the eighth and Kobe up to that point I think he'd had somewhere in the double digits of scoreless innings 
and they hit a three-run homer off of him to cut it to 18-7 to going into the ninth. And then, you know, shout out to Kobe because he goes back out there and gets a gets the say, or he just, it wasn't technically a say, but he goes back out there for the bottom of the ninth, gets a 1-2-3 inning. And, you know, that takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of courage in yourself to go back out there with a, with a one-run lead and, you know, get those three outs after giving up a homer in the previous inning. And so that was huge. They completed the sweep. First sweep since 2019 in Big 12 play. First sweep in conference with Thompson era, obviously. Just a huge win. And it's hard to win on the road. I mean, just a huge, huge, huge win for the guys. I was really proud of them. Um, Enzo went five for five. That's a career high five hits. Ty Joe had two for six. Wes went three for three. Hunter Deplansky, two for five. Zach Mason, two for six. Cole Posey, three for six. Tyreek, three for six. Just a really good day up and down the order. And they come home on Tuesday night, play UTA in Arlington. Kind of a sluggish game. Um, offense was slow on both sides, but the pitching was pitching was really good. Jaron Matheson missed about a month with an injury. He, he started that game on the mound. Two and two-thirds scoreless. RJ Rue, scoreless frame. Tanner Duke, scoreless frame. Ethan Calder, surprisingly, made an appearance. Um... 1.2 innings pitch, scoreless. Gabe Craig gave up one earned run. And then Kobe got the save with an inning out of the pin that was scoreless, got the save. Um, yeah, only seven hits in this game. But, you know, Tyreek had played really well, another three for four performance. And I'll get into him in a minute. But that's a four game, four games in a row. Like I said, this is the first time this year they went 4 0 in a week. And their winning streak in Big 12 plays at five, their winning streak overall is at four. Um, just a lot of a lot of encouraging things going into a huge series against Kansas this weekend. And um, yeah, I'll kind of get into some more positives when we get back. But RPI is up to the highest it's ever been in the Thompson era, sitting around 115 at this moment. They're 7 and 18. They're a game away from 500, which is, you know, I think for most people, that probably was unfathomable after starting 1 and 7, I think, 1 and 6, something like that. Um, and the craziest thing, too, is before that UTSA game and, and toward the end of March, I was like, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's an opportunity to get to 500 with UTSA and Cincinnati and HCU and UIW, BYU, UTA. And, uh, and you know, yeah, shout out to the guys. They made it happen. They're one game below 500. And um, it's going to be a really, really, really tough test this weekend. But we'll uh, we'll get into that into a minute. And so first, I want to thank uh, Mark George and our sponsors at TNG Chemical. And we'll go into a brief commercial break. To say my wife and I have a lot to clean is an understatement. So we go to TNG Chemical, where the pros know what cleaning solutions to use and give us detailed instructions on exactly how to use them. We never got that kind of advice from any other stores. And the prices at TNG are great. From general household cleaners to odor control solutions for our pets, we go to TNG Chemical and Supply. That's why. TNG Chemical and Supply. That's why. Okay, we're back, everybody. And before I talk about individual performances, I mean, I don't know how I forgot to mention this off the top, but yeah, Baylor's won nine of their last 10 games. Like I said, like crazy that at, you know, at, earlier in the season with all those injuries, with all those tough losses, the loss to ACU, the loss to UTSA, the blowout to Sam Houston. I mean, this just didn't seem possible. And here they are. And so shout out to them. Um, and then I think, you know, a really important thing about this weekend was I don't, I don't think Baylor wins that series without Ethan Calder and Kobe Andrade out of the bullpen. And like I mentioned a minute ago, like those two have been Coach Thompson's most reliable guys, but I'll kind of get into their numbers really quick. Ethan Calder leads the team 1.76 ERA, 0.88 whip, 30.2 innings pitch. Like I think 11 of his last 12 outings have been scoreless. I mean, he's just been incredible this season. Um, Kobe Andrade, and not to mention, he's walked two people in 30 in two-thirds innings. That's insane. Um, Kobe Andrade, 3.68 ERA. It's second best on the team. Whip, 1.09, which is really solid at this level. Um, 24 strikeouts and uh, only six walks. I mean, you know, I think what makes those two guys so good is they're not walking people. They're not handing out free passes. And I know where some of the other relievers have gotten into troubles when they're not trusting their stuff. They're walking people. And then, you know, they don't have... 98 that can get by guys like they got a pitch and when you're walking people it's tough to do that and so you know those two guys have been awesome shout out to them like i said mason marriott's been really good colin mckinney didn't have his best outing over the weekend but i mean he still struck out a ton of guys he still has his potentials through the roof um he's just very very encouraging for the future especially with the pitching staff and then at the plate i mean enzo apodaca earned big 12 player of the week he had a great great series against byu he went 10 for 20 this week he was I believe he was 9 for 15 against BYU. 
Um, and then this is a crazy stat. Since moving into the leadoff role, which was against which was against so the Cincinnati series started on Thursday. Coach Thompson moved him into the leadoff role on Friday. Since then, he has an OBP of over it's he has an on base percentage of 563. That's crazy. And then slashing 447, 447 average, um, 632. Slugging, I mean, he's just playing so well right now. He's just been an incredible addition for, for the Bears and whatnot. And then Tyreek Kemp is playing really well at shortstop. I mean, all year he kind of struggled beginning um, at the beginning with defensively, but, you know, his glove is so good. You're just kind of hoping, man, if he can just hit 225, if he can just get on base three 315, like, you know, I think that would kind of offset his struggles offensively because of how good his glove is. But, man, in the last week, 9 for 14 – with three extra base hits hit his first home run of the season in Provo a little altitude helped that one a little bit I'm sure but you know shout out to him he had a couple of doubles they're also hitting 642 this past week on base percentage is up to three let's see here I have so many tabs open with all these stats his on base percentage is up to 387 good for one two three four fifth on the team and yeah I mean if he can become a viable you know, guy at the plate. I mean, that really, really, really opens up Baylor's lineup when he's hitting in the eight hole and he's not striking out every other at bat. Because, you know, what was interesting about him, and I've mentioned this before, is he was on par with with Enzo and Ty throughout the fall. Like, they all played really similar. They were all getting on base, just hitting machines. He hit, I mean, I think he hit like 350 at Juco last year, and that just didn't translate it whatsoever. I mean, he looked completely lost at the plate for the two months of the season. And yeah, now he's hitting 235, and for the first time in over a month, he's above the Mendoza line, which is crazy to even like to, to think about. And another guy who's really been a huge impact at the bottom of the order has been Cole Posey. He's been a guy that was a huge contributor on last year's team. Granted, that team was really bad, but he was a, probably a third or fourth best player in that lineup. And this uh, this season, he's kind of dealt with some injuries. Um, before the UIW series, there was an impromptu tryout for first base. Um, because Mason Greer has really struggled this year. Will Pendergrass out for the year with an injury. And Cole Posey ended up winning that job. And in his first at-bat since being put back in the starting lineup, I believe it was his 19th at-bat of the season, lines a grand slam over the left field wall. And so he, uh, he's been a really nice, really nice surprise, honestly, because playing through an injury, that's not really something I expected. Multi-hit contest in four of his last five starts. He's had a handful of extra base hits, hit a home run in Provo with a Little nice little bat flip has had a few few doubles. I believe he's had eleven RBIs in his last five games. Just he's hitting in the six seven hole, kind of depending on the game, and he's played really well. I mean, I think that's your first baseman for the rest of the year. Um, what a what a nice surprise! And I know it's been tough for him, you know, being such a big contributor last year and having to ride the bench for the most part. And Coach Thompson's mentioned that. Cole's mentioned that. Um, just both have been really good sports about. It. He's a fifth year guy. I mean, he's super mature. Really enjoy talking with Cole, and so he's handled that situation really really well. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the lineup is just playing and playing incredible right now. I believe they've had at least eight runs in eight of their last 10 games, and that's been a huge part of this winning streak. The pitching's been really good. The defense has been really good. And I, I know, like, they played UIW, and I know BYU's kind of toward the bottom of the Big 12, but they're winning games they should, they should win, and I don't think that's been the case at any point in the last three years for the most part. And so, you know, I don't want to take that away from them because, yeah, they're beating, you know, lesser opponents, but at the same time, they're playing really good baseball. And so that kind of takes me into the into my point against Kansas. I mean, this is a huge series. There's some there's about six or seven teams in the Big 12 that are all kind of just jumbled in the middle that are separated by like less than two games. Baylor's eight and seven in conference play. Kansas is seven and eight. And the thing about the Big 12 this year is there's no really there's very little separation. I think you're gonna start to see BYU and Houston kind of drop toward the bottom. And you'll have, and right now, Oklahoma State, they're kind of in contention to host a regional. West Virginia and OU are kind of at the top. But then there's about, what, yeah, eight teams separated all kind of in the middle. And there's not really a lot of, I don't know, I mean, Texas is probably the most talented of that group, but there's a lot of teams that are very similar. I mean, Baylor took a series from Tech, um, stuff like that. All those teams are just right there. And so I think with Kansas, they're, Baylor and Kansas on paper are very even teams. I think it's going to be, Kansas hasn't done anything of note in conference play. They lost a series to West Virginia, lost a series to UCF. They beat TCU when TCU was ranked third, but... As we've seen since then, TCU appears pretty fraudulent. So, 
But, I mean, Kansas has really good numbers at the plate, really good numbers on the mound. But I think one thing to keep in mind is their non-conference is, is really bad. They played, like, Illinois-Chicago. I mean, they did play a midweek game with Nebraska beat them. Nebraska's a good team. But, yeah, I mean, their strength of schedule is in the 90s. Baylor's is in the 40s. So, I mean, there's a little – I feel like those numbers are inflated a bit. But we'll see. I mean, we'll see this weekend. It's going to be a really good series, I think. Baylor needs to win two of three. Um, go three and one this week, you know, get above 500. And then those last four – Big 12 series are at West Virginia, um, TCU at home, at OU, and then UCF and Waco. And I think the interesting thing about that is I don't think Baylor should get swept in any of those series, but I don't think Baylor should sweep anybody. So, yeah, I mean, who knows where, where conference play goes the rest of the year. I'd probably say somewhere around 7 and 8 would make the most sense. And then you finish conference play at 500, and you probably make the Big 12 tournament, which would be a huge step in the right direction. Take that momentum into the offseason, and hopefully the coaching staff, you know, uses the portal more this off season and there will be some more uh, more NIL money for guys and people will want to stay because you can you know you can see something's being built here um and you know what I was thinking about this the other day I remember after they lost Baylor lost to Tennessee in the Shriners on Sunday to start the year I remember coach Thompson kind of giving off the vibes of he knew something was coming like he knew you know they were going to turn a corner at some point and while it took a month and a half probably since then you know, I think this team, I, I think they really have turned a corner. And this this series this weekend, like I mentioned a hundred times, is going to be really big for that. Um, go out and get swept. I mean, you pretty much destroy all the momentum you've built. Go out and lose this series. And, it, you know, you have a bad taste in your mouth, but you go out and win this series or even sweep a pretty solid Kansas team. I mean, this team's going to be riding high. And it's going to be a really exciting finish to the, into the, to the end of the season. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope people come out to the ballpark this weekend. It's going to be really – it's going to be a really good weekend – some good baseball being played, and this is a huge series for Baylor. This is probably the biggest series they've had in quite some time, maybe the biggest series since I started covering the team, like, you know, for standings-wise, for momentum and whatnot. And so, so yeah, be, go to the ballpark this weekend. Appreciate you guys. You know, if you're not a member of Sikkim 365 Premium, subscribe because we have game threads. We have, you know, weekly articles I try to do. I try to do feature stories once every week or so. Check out my Drew Leach feature story. I really enjoyed working with Drew on that one. Um, I'm, proud of, I'm proud of that one. So, anyway. Uh, thank you to Mark George and our sponsors at TNG Chemical, and I will talk to you guys next week. I gotta say, running a small business can be tough. As a professional, keeping my place clean for employees and customers can feel like a full-time job. That's why I trust the pros at TNG Chemical and Supply for all my supplies. And now my business stays clean, and I'm surprised how much less I'm spending each month on cleaning and maintenance. Now I can even save on products from TNG Chemical for my home. TNG Chemical and Supply. That's why. TNG.